I'm Larry Glass with Heartwood. We have a moniker for our company called Architecture for the Birds. 30 years ago, we started a birdhouse business in my brother's garage and in his dining room. And now, we've been fortunate enough to outlast our competitors. We are the premier birdhouse manufacturer in the world in Star, Mississippi. We're unknown in Mississippi, but we are brand name in New York, so who knew? Back in 2008, uh, you know, we had an economic decline. Uh, birdhouse business, uh, it declined as well. We realized that people didn't have to buy a birdhouse, but we needed to survive, so we got into the lumber business. We started selling lumber, and that really took off for us. It really touched a nerve in, the, in, our, in our state. We sell that pr primarily locally to contractors and do-it-yourselfers. Then uh, I got a call one day from a fellow in, in Starkville who wanted me to make him some bee boxes. So I did, I made him about 20 bee boxes. Well, that started a whole new part of our business in making bee equipment, and we sell that bee equipment worldwide. We also make furniture. I'm sitting in a rocking chair that we make. We also make swings and gliders and other types of furniture. So I characterize our business as a four-legged stool. You got uh, birds, bees, boards, and furniture. So that's what we do here in Star. We didn't start it as a business, we started it as a hobby. My brother and his wife were going to craft shows on Saturday mornings and they would go to some small town in Mississippi, set up a table, hope somebody would come by and buy a $5 birdhouse. And they did, and we grew from there. Uh, the only difference between what we do and what Steve Jobs did when he started his garage is about $100 billion. Otherwise, we're about the same. The silo came from down in Simpson County, adjacent to where we are here in Rankin County. Jerry and I needed an office here at our factory. We didn't have one. We decided what it was going to cost us. We realized we couldn't afford it. So we looked for an alternative. And a friend of mine had just bought this property in Simpson County, but they were going to graze pine trees. They didn't need the silo. So they made us a terrific deal. You come move it, you, can ha you pay us a small amount, and you can have it. We had found a friend of ours who used to install them. So he went down and took it apart, bolt by bolt, brought it up here on a trailer. We poured a slab. He bolted it up with a crane, stood it up on that slab, and then we outfitted it on the inside, put the insulation in it, the electrical, uh, sheetrock, paint, and decorated it. And that's how we came about it. it. It was a cheap alternative to having a thousand square feet of Class A office space. In retrospect, it was the smartest thing we ever did at the time. It didn't seem smart, it just seemed cheap because everybody talks about it. Well, they want to come to the come to Star, and we have, we have a sign on the door. It says, the Oval Office. People want to see the Oval Office in Star, so they come down and see that. They see our train, they see our artwork, they see our products, and they get a sense of who we are as a company by going in there. It's just a nice, warm, fuzzy place. When we first started building birdhouses, my brother Jerry literally was using used fence boards. We'd go over to Jeff Coach Fence Company, and they had a pile of fences they had torn down, and they'd let us go through and pick those boards out and bring them home. We'd take the nails out of them, cut them into shapes, and put them together as a birdhouse. We thought we were doing the, the wise thing. We thought that was, that's the way you make a birdhouse. One of the first shows we went to, uh, a real birder walked up to our table and asked us what we were doing. We said, well, we're, we're making and selling birdhouses. He said, well, no, none of these birdhouses uh, are technically correct. We said, well, what do you mean? Well, the hole sizes are not right. You don't have any drainage in it. Drainage in it. You don't have any ventilation. They're not the right size. Well, it got us to thinking, we better investigate this a little bit further because we didn't realize people really, we just thought they were buying an architectural piece, but they were in fact buying a birdhouse. So we, we started looking around for lumber and realized that cypress that grows in the south was a wood that would last a long time outside. Why not use cypress in our birding products? Because we, we literally think our birdhouses will last 20 to 30 years. So we use a high grade, kill dried cypress that we buy most of it comes out of uh, South Georgia, the largest hardwood mill in America is in South Georgia. We buy from them. But it's, it's cut in the south and grows naturally here, and it naturally regenerates. When you cut a cypress tree down, another cypress tree grows right out of that stump. So it, it will re, uh, regenerate easily, so we're not destroying the environment by cutting down a cypress tree and having it made into a birdhouse. So we've used that product through the years and educated people all over the country why cypress is such a good choice for our birdhouse. Not all of our houses are made from cypress. We started out with cypress and we still make the preponderance of our houses from cypress, but we, we uh, had an opportunity to buy some mahogany one time from a casket manufacturer. And we thought, well, maybe we could make birdhouses out of mahogany. Who in the world makes birdhouses from mahogany but Hartwood, nobody else. Then we ran into a product called uh, PVC, which is like PVC pipe, and we use cellular PVC to make a lot of our houses. It's a plastic material, it's virgin in use, 
It's clean, it's easy to use, it's, it's insulated, it never requires painting, it's all white, but it never requires painting, it doesn't rot, it doesn't peel. We had no idea that our birdhouses would sell like they have. We were going to craft shows on Saturday morning, and we would have a good day at a craft show. You sell two or three hundred dollars worth of products, you think, well, we've had a wonderful day, that's two or three hundred dollars of profit, because we had those old used fence boards we weren't paying anything for. But once we went to Atlanta, to the market over there, America's Mart, and introduced ourselves to the wholesale market around the country, we went from having no dealers around America to all of a sudden having 350 dealers at one time. So we were discovered, and at the same time we were surprised and shocked, and on the way home we scratched our head and said, what in the world are we going to do? We had no inventory, we had no factory, we had no computer, we had no phone system. We had some used fence boards is all we had. And we just had to go to work trying to meet the demand. And since that time, we've evolved with many things in terms of buildings, equipment, uh, manufacturing techniques. Uh, we've evolved greatly. And as a result, we've grown from that. We try to learn from our customers, listen to our customers, and we try to build a quality product that'll last them, truly will last them a lifetime. And that has really been uh, our, it's really our calling card today. The preponderance of the merchandise that's sold in America today is made in some country other than America, primarily China. So we would be at a show in Atlanta and there would be a person walk up to you and he would take out a tape measure, he'd start measuring our products and start taking pictures. And I would stop and say, uh, yes sir, can I help you? Well, I'm a manufacturer in China and we'd like to quote you prices on making your houses. And I said, well, we're really not interested, but I, I can appreciate your interest in our products. Well, that didn't satisfy some, and we actually received from some, they would copy our houses and send us a sample of what they could do for us. And the prices were just phenomenally low. You would think, well, why, why wouldn't I do that? Except we realized that we'd lose the personal touch, we lose the Made in America, we lose all our, our uh, teammates here, we, we just couldn't do that. We just couldn't back a cargo container up to our door and pull stuff out and ship it to somebody and say this is as good as we can make it here in Star. The fact of the matter is it's not as good as we can make it here, but we could, we could make a lot more money doing that, but we cho didn't choose to go that route. Our competitors did. They went that route. They started importing, and what happened, their product started falling apart, and as a result of that, they went out of business, and that's how we became the, the number one birdhouse manufacturer because everybody else just fell away. They just weren't willing to find local labor, find people to make the product, make a quality product, and deliver it and stand behind it. And we are. We like what we do. You've got to like this business to be in it. You just can't get in it for the money. You've got to like it. And we like it. Well, through the years, uh, we add a few products to our line every year. At the beginning of two th uh, 2020, we had 82 different styles of houses we made. When the pandemic came along and people were at home on the internet spending their money, all of a sudden birdhouses became the thing. People were not going to Disney World, they were not taking a cruise, they weren't going to Europe. They were spending their money online. And our birdhouse business exploded. We were glad of that. The problem is you can't take a fixed number of employees and a fixed number of facilities and equipment and double your production overnight or triple your production. You cannot do it. We had to restrict our sales. We cut back from 82 models to 52 models in order to survive. We just were drowning in orders that we couldn't fill. Uh, so we suspended those 30 items, and one day we hope to bring those items back to the line. But until things, we get a, a greater appreciation of what we can actually make, we're not going to try to do that right now. So probably for this year, we won't make but just 52 different items, which is still a lot of items to keep in stock. Uh, you were asking about our equipment. How did we wind up with this industrial equipment? Uh, we obviously didn't start out with it. We started out with a, a Craftsman or a DeWalt or uh, some uh, Black & Decker. We started out with some low-end equipment tools that we had, but we realized when you do the volume that we do, those tools just simply won't hold up. They won't last. So you've got to have something faster and bigger and better. Uh, I often characterize our machines, if you're going to kill a fly, get a sledgehammer. You can really do a good job on that fly. You've got to get bigger equipment than you have a job to do, because you want your equipment to just uh, coast along and do your job and no strain and last a lifetime. So we're in an industrial equipment we use now. Most of it is three phase. The furniture manufacturers are across America and around the world use this kind of equipment. And we simply got online and just kind of learned what we needed, what was available. Some of the, some of the equipment that we bought, we never saw it till, it till it rolled up here on a truck and we paid for it and had it delivered. But the more we bought, the more we realized the bigger equipment you can afford, 
the better you are off running uh, material through it. It'll just last so much longer, do a better job, do it faster, and with less effort on the part of the workers. And that's what we try to do. We don't want to overwork our people. We want the machine to do the work. Most of the lumber that we buy, particularly the cypress and the mahogany, uh, comes into us kill dried, mill rough from the, from the mills. Now we could buy it all plain and edged, but you, you limit yourself to the dimensions you have when you do that. We'd rather buy wheat and make a cake rather than buy the cake already made. So we bring the lumber in kill dried and, uh, and ready to go. And the first thing we generally do to lumber is we run it through a straight line rip and put a perfect glue line edge on it. And then depending on what you're doing with that material, we'll turn, turn around and, and run it through a two-sided planer and plane the two flat sides of it. So you've got material that's smooth on three sides, it's ready to put up against your fence of a table saw or a straight line rip and run that through there to rip your boards out, you're ready to go. So that's how we do it. Then we also have a resaw. Sometimes we'll take a one inch board and split it flat way and create two half inch boards out of it. So that's an easy process. We also have a gang rip, which you put multiple blades with spacers between them. And you take one wide board and create one or, more, or two or more narrower boards all in one pass. You run it through there, it has a 50 horsepower motor. It just loves to take a one by 12 and turn it into six two inch boards. It's, it's so easy rather than rip run that thing through your table saw six times to do it. After we uh, do the initial uh, breakdown of the wood, we do a lot of in trimming and cutting to length. And in that process, we use one of two pieces of equipment. We, use, uh, we have several radial arm saws. We'll set a stop up on a radial arm saw and we'll be able to uh, in trim the board first, then run over to the stop, and then repeat that same length by hit, bumping that material into the stop and cut them into multiple sizes. Sometimes when we're cutting a board at an angle, we'll use a compound miter saw as opposed to a radial arm saw. The radial arm saw takes a lot of setup to get a compound angle, but a chop saw it doesn't. So we use multiple 12 inch Makita chop saws we have in our shop. We use 18 gauge brad guns to nail those together. Brad's anywhere from half inch up to an inch and a half, depending on what is required. And they nail that product together and stack them on carts. And then once those stacked on carts, they go up to paint. Uh, they go up forward, uh, we have a lady that paints for us and she knows uh, what's coming up on those carts based on our uh, schedule that day and she knows the colors of those particular items because most items come in multiple colors and she separates them, she paints them by color and then she would puts them back on the cart, pushes them across the aisle to the two men who shingle for us. She is the only person here that does our painting. She's a, she's the, she is the painting department and she paints thousands and thousands of houses a year. Every house we sell that requires painting she paints it. I've never had one complaint from a customer saying, I got this house that was poorly painted. Not one in 20 years, that's remarkable. But we just, don't, we just don't let product get out of here that's not done right and she knows how to do it right. Those little shingles you see on those houses are put on one at a time with an 18 gauge brad nailer. And we, we actually cut and mill those shingles by the millions and nail them on one at a time and have through the years, these 25 years we've been that's our, that's our calling card. People recognize our product simply by the shingle that's on it because nobody else in the world does that process. You can straight line a board with several methods. One method that most people use in small shops is a joiner. You take multiple passes on the edge of a board with a joiner and you can straighten it up. But in our business where time is money, we want to do that quickly and efficiently. And the, the efficient way to do that is make one pass through a straight line rip saw. A straight line rip saw is a large version of a table saw, except the saw blade is on the top and it has what we call a dip chain that pulls the board through there, provides the locomotion for the board to travel through there. That chain is slotted so that blade can go down into the chain and still let it pull it through without hitting the chain. On the top side of the board is a series of spring-loaded rollers that hold the board in place, holds the board rigid. And we have a laser light on that saw that tells us where the blade is going to cut. So you line your laser light up where you want the board cut, the dip chain and the roller wheels on top, hold the board in place as it passes past that blade. And it gives you an absolutely glue line straight edge for eight feet guaranteed. So you can butt two boards up together that's both been straight line, they're just like they're kiss. You don't have to clamp them hard, they just kiss and go right together. Then we'll turn that board around if we're going to use the second edge of it. We'll just flip it around, flip it over, and run it through against the fence of the straight line rip. And it'll cut a parallel line on the other side of the board, whatever distance from the fence that you set it. 
So that way, if you're building a table or a countertop or something where you're joint edge joining boards, they'll all jump, both edges will go together. You don't have to strain and struggle and you don't have a gap between all the edges. It makes a nice glue line edge. People often ask us, uh, you know, you, you've done a lot of things, what are you gonna do next? I think probably what's next for us is not so much next in terms of product line, it's probably next in terms of species of wood that we carry. We carry about 10 species of wood now, but there's still some other woods that we like to carry, we get demand for, but we simply don't have room to store them. Uh, the lumber business is, takes a lot of storage, and we have a fourth building on the drawing board right now, across the street, about another 10,000 square feet that we hope to build in 2021. That'll give us greater capabilities, give us more shop space, give us more room for storage. So what's probably gonna be different is it's just simply the volume that we're able to accomplish. Right now, we just don't have the room to do the volume that we could do if we had more space. If you wanna see our birding products uh, online, you can do that. Also, our bee products are online. Our company is called Heartwood. So if you go to eheartwood.com, you'll see our offerings there. You'll see our birdhouses, you'll see our bee equipment. We're developing a new site right now called heartwoodlumber.com. We have a homepage available, but it doesn't have a product on it yet, but it will soon. We'll have a second website for our lumber, which we, we desperately need. So you can go there and look our products over, or you can visit us. We're one block off Highway 49. If you leave Jackson 20 minutes later, you can be in Star. You come to the only red light in Star, you turn right, you come down to the first four-way stop, you turn right, we're the next thing past the church building. We're one block off the highway. We're very easy to find. We've got 25,000 square feet of building space here. Nice parking. You can come see the Oval Office. You can, you can, if you're looking for lumber, bring your wife. She'll look at the birdhouses. And, uh, or you can call us and see what our product line is. We'll quote your pricing, send you pictures, whatever needs. We're, we'll, we'll solve your problem. So give us a call.